Ubisoft Forward is just a few days away now, and we know Far Cry 6 will be one of the biggest games there. So to set the stage, I went back through some interviews and found a ton of interesting info on things like third-person cutscenes, player agency, and even an Assassin's Creed-style wanted system. Before we dive in, I'm sure there will be way more to talk about after Ubisoft Forward, so make sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss any of it. As you probably noticed from the reveal gameplay, Far Cry 6 is going to have third-person sections for the first time in the series. That means we're going to see our protagonist, Danny Rojas, not only in cutscenes, but also sometimes in combat and in guerrilla camps. This comes via GameSpot, who had a huge interview article, talked to several developers, namely narrative director Navid Kavari. He says that third-person cutscenes feel seamless in the game and provide more of a connection to Danny's journey and the story of Yara, but it's also there to show off some more customization with our character. We know there's going to be a gear system in Far Cry 6, similar to maybe like something we have in Valhalla where you equip pieces in different slots. So it just makes sense that we'd be able to see the pieces we're wearing even though it's a first person game. And this makes perfect sense to me because you don't want a situation like Cyberpunk where the game gives you a ton of visual customization options, but you only get to see it in the pause menu, when you're on motorbikes, you know, when you're looking in mirrors. I know Cyberpunk is a completely different type of game, but hey, they're both, you know, first person, they have customization options. So this was really cool to hear and it makes perfect sense. In the gameplay reveal, we saw those moments where Danny is sort of walking around guerrilla camps with the backpack on, and this fooled me, honestly. I was looking at this and thinking it's this is just cinematics for the trailer, but we'll actually be walking around like this. The obvious parallel is Valhalla walking around Ravensthorpe. We're going to walk around similar to Assassin's Creed and talk to different characters in these camps. There's still no word as far as I've found on whether there's going to be dialogue options. And personally, I don't want them. I'd like to just click one button and get sucked into a cutscene. Once we leave the guerrilla camp, Kavari says that the camera will zoom back in and return to first person. So that's kind of how it's going to work. And the only other time that we know of that will be in third person is when we activate our Supremo backpacks, which we've seen in a lot of the trailers and gameplay and promotion, which Kavari says was designed for players to get a better feel of the impact in action. This next bit of info comes by way of Games Radar, and it involves player agency. Lead gameplay designer David Grivel talks a lot about player agency and some stealth info here. So first off, we know that Danny will be able to holster weapons. This was shown again during the gameplay trailer with some subtext information from Juan explaining how Danny can blend in as a Yaren in order to slip behind enemy lines and do things like sabotage military equipment in order to get an edge on the enemy. But it goes a bit deeper, I think, than what was shown, because according to Grivel, this is a feature Yubi wanted to include because modern guerrilla fighters actually do this. They blend in with civilians, and as long as you don't do anything crazy in the game, no one's going to bother you. So we can slip behind in areas that we're really not supposed to be in and do casual things like go fishing or play dominoes, just be an actual citizen within a fully realized world. But back to the idea of the holster, first off, this entire concept is something that is definitely immersive. Personally, I, I like when a game allows me to holster my weapon, but being able to do that would let you do things like this. For example, you could walk up to a military vehicle controlled by Anton's regime. You could blend and pretend you are a civilian, then decide to hijack it on the spot without them firing a single shot. It's sort of that kind of dynamic gameplay that we can expect thanks to things like the holster. If UB is taking the time and attention in order to project that fantasy with something like a holster, it gets my mind racing about what other kind of things we're gonna be able to do just because of little dynamic things like this that let us pretend that we're actually in this situation and make decisions how we see fit. In this same interview, we learn that this philosophy translates to the rest of the world. It's not just in cities. In Far Cry 5, if you remember, there were few moments where you could stop and appreciate the world, you know, just wander around, soak it all in. You were constantly getting interrupted by 
one of the bosses or a random roaming patrolling car. World designer Ben Hall says, the team wanted the player to feel like we were exploring an entire country instead of just one single region. We need to feel like we're in an actual place instead of one, you know, single carved out section. And we should expect a strong contrast between the beauty of Yara in this tropical setting and the chaotic, war-torn urban environments in places like the capital, Esperanza. Grivel also confirmed that in order to deliver on the fantasy of true freedom, players will be able to do missions in almost any order that we want. The game is built in such a way that you can start anywhere, talk to anyone, and do missions however you want. Player agency is the key. But I think finding that balance is very important, and it feels like they're on the right track, because You've got to strike a balance between giving players the tools to do whatever they want, but also having that narrative weight, that momentum pushing you through the experience. Hall said that the entire world is open from the beginning to support that fantasy. However, you can't expect to just waltz right into Esperanza from the start. The capital city is swarming with elite police troops ready to shoot you on sight. So, this is a challenging part of the world that contrasts heavily with areas outside of it. Speaking of, it wouldn't be a Far Cry game without some remote sort of dangerous feeling areas, right? That's where FMD bases come in. These are Far Cry 6's version of the classic outpost. Anton's regime has repurposed old ruins around the map by placing flak cannons there and checkpoints that will have to bust through and take out. It's going to be hard to travel through certain parts of the map without meeting heavy resistance. So that's why we have these gorilla paths, which we've talked about before. These are secret passageways that let you get around these high volume areas. And then probably the biggest revelation for this entire interview, there's going to be a notoriety system in Far Cry 6, a wanted system, which should sound familiar because it's an idea borrowed from the Assassin's Creed games. This is really cool because it seems to attempt to solve an issue that might have annoyed players with previous games, especially Far Cry 5. Instead of having Anton's men attack you on site or just kind of appear randomly around the corner, there's going to be a meter that tracks how much destruction and how much basically noise you're causing. If that meter reaches a certain point, it means that Anton is going to send more reinforcements to hunt you down. And it means it'll be harder for us to holster our weapon and take advantage of that system, kind of blending in as a citizen and walking around without getting noticed. But this gives more of an opportunity for stealth players, because if you, you know, want to play as the stealthy saboteur type, you can avoid that kind of open conflict and keep that meter down and low. On the flip side, if you really don't care and you just want to blow things up like a Far Cry game, you're free to do that too. But keep in mind, this meter can actually go down. So if you run into a situation where you need to go loud, you need to blow things up, Grivel said it's important to let players control how the world reacts with their own actions. You're not locked into one play style. At the end of the day, it's the game sort of bending around you, right? You decide how you want to play and approach the system, and it will react to your choices. To me, this is great news to hear. It signals that UB is trying to make a game based more around ideas that support the fantasy of this world, like what it would be like to be in Yara and the tools that you would need to use in order to take down Anton, rather than going down a more formulaic route. Formulas are great, don't get me wrong. They help us identify and fall in love with our favorite series. We know what to expect when we have them. But I think this community and certainly the larger gaming community has a sense they recognize when things get a bit stale. And this interview definitely gets me more excited to see what they're going to show off during Ubisoft Forward on Saturday. That is it for this one, guys. Once again, it is E3 season, so I will be covering UB Forward and any new Far Cry 6 details out of it, so stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please let me know by clicking the like button. If you're new around here, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and also click the bell to receive live notifications so you don't miss my next video. You can also follow me on social media. I'm JV on YT on Twitter and JV.YT on Instagram for updates on all of my content. If you want to chat more about this game or really any other, join our community Discord server over at discord.gg slash JV on YT. Links for everything I've talked about are in the description below. Big thanks to my YouTube members, Ultrafans Bill and Cam, Superfans Tipsy Sergey, Tarl K, and William. 
fans Matthew Spyro, JBO, Level 42, Blood Sky, Kamal, and Andy. And supporters Nos, Sung, Adam, Mr. Hollow, Quickness, Firkin, Jay, Sam, Abishak, Ferris, Report, Gabrielle, Abraham, Reaperman, John, and Teo for supporting the channel. If you want to support me further, click the join button below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.